send out, I send, um, I send um, uh, reviews, I type out reviews. Show you, you have reviews? I, I gave it to her last week, but she told me when I walked in that she lost it. And I, gave, I want to give you a review because I have, I have handouts. I make handouts every week. Okay. I'm going to give, oh, the phone number. Okay. So we'll send, I'm going to send you all of the ones we did. Okay. Yeah, all of the ones we did. You can just print them yourself. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's get let's uh, let's get started, everybody. If we could all settle down a bit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you guys turn really quick? As I'm not going to teach this, but I want you to start getting familiar with Leviticus 23. Leviticus, it's in your book, and it's actually um, let me count the pages. Oh no, they're probably all messed up. Why don't you go around and help them? It's um, after the kings of Israel. A bun, a bun, it's um, Leviticus 23. What? What number? What? The page? Oh, number three. Sorry. Sorry about that. It looks like this. Look at you guys. Leviticus. Leviticus 23. The seven festivals of the Lord. Leviticus 23. The seven festivals of the Lord. Let's all say the Torah. Come on. Remember... In Malachi, it's in your last week's handout, Malachi chapter 4. What did the Lord say when he's closing up or bringing a closure to the First Testament? We call it the Old Testament. Remember, the last book of your First Testament is the book of Malachi. Let's all say Malachi. Okay, remember what the Lord says. Everybody say these are the, oh, not you guys. Everybody says that these are the days of Elijah. Remember the song, these are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. These are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Now watch, Malachi chapter 4 tells us, I, get, I put it on your handout last week. It says this, remember the Torah. It says law, but you got to put remember the Torah. I said that last week. Remember the Torah. Why? Because people were going to forget it. And in the mountain of transfiguration, in the mountain of Bashan, Harmon, and Tabor, remember the mountain of transfiguration was who? Moses, Jesus, and Elijah. And the Bible says in the book of Luke, they were filled, they were, they were, they were under or they were filled with the glory of God. So who's standing there with the full glory of God? Moses, the Torah. And Jesus, the word, and Elijah, the prophets, where we will be raptured, okay? Now get your pen and paper, because I'm going to go a little fast, because this is not my teaching. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Passover's coming up. Passover's coming up. Now's your chance. Now's your opportunity to honor the Torah, okay? Remember the Torah. The seven festivals of the Lord. Or you do one at your church, or wherever you want to do it, but honor it. Okay. So now, can you see, is everybody there yet, or do you need help to find it? I have to answer this. Is Priscilla? Oh, good, good. It's talking about the house. Yeah, yeah, but things like that. Can I do an offer? No, we'll tell you a place that you can find the model. They have a little conversation on the next one. They just got an offer already. We have like about seven. Turning off my phone. My phone's over here in case I'm looking, okay? What? Okay, is everybody there, you guys? Yes. Okay, he didn't see death. Elijah didn't see death, right, you guys? Hey, and guess who was after her? Jezebel. Remember Ahab and Jezebel? Okay, these are the days of Elijah. Remember that. Remember, when you think of the days of Elijah, you have learned history. Here at Shiloh, you learn history. The days of Elijah, who was he a prophet to, everybody? Hello? Yes, he was a prophet to who? The Northern Kingdom, right? 
And what do we have in New York? The, ba the, the Arch of Baal. And we got the bull over there going on. And we got, we got Jezebel and Ahab in the White House. Don't, don't get mad at me if you voted for Biden. Okay, don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you history repeats itself. Okay, now, and he's for abortion. He is for abortion. Moloch worship. They're not against abortion. They're for it. I'm like, what do I have on my arm? I thought it was my keys. Anybody parked in the driveway, you block the driveway, they're going to tow the car. Anybody block the driveway? Yeah, put it in the back. Yeah, she got it. Put it in the back. There's parking in the back. So the days of Elijah. Okay, now, really quick, who was Isaiah a prophet to? Who was Isaiah a prophet? Southern kingdom. No golden calf, remember? Come on, remember. I gave you notes. I give you notes every week. Okay. This isn't my teaching, but let's go over it. Because Passover is going to be in the month of April. Correct, everybody? Somebody get me the date, please. Passover, 6 p.m. We will be having a Seder Passover here. What? No, but it, tell, it tells us the date of you doing the internet. Okay, are you see Passover? You see, are you on there? When you put right there, let's all say seven festivals. Okay, number one is what? It says right there, Passover. You see it? It's in the Bible. Passover. The second one is what? Third one? Fourth one? Fifth one? Which is what? The blowing of the shofars. Write that down. They call it, okay, and then, oh, it says right there, the trumpets. Okay, the, the, which is the, the sixth one is what? And the last one? Tabernacles. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give you, the Lord establishes these, these, and we're going to begin, there's only, there's actually, we know that, that three of them has been, have been fulfilled. Actually four, no, not really, three. But, um, so write down Jesus is a Passover lamb. Right there, real quick. Come on, let's look at Jesus. through The, the Lord established the, the festivals are dress rehearsals. Listen, they're divine appointments. Okay? Number one, Jesus said, I am the Passover lamb. Write that down right there. Number two, is he, did he, is he the bread of life? Okay, he became what? The, the second festival. He became the bread of life. Right there, Jesus is the bread of life. Number three. Okay, number one, Jesus is the Passover lamb. Remember the children of Israel had to, uh, had to uh, offer up a lamb? Remember they put the blood in the doorpost? That was already beginning the picture of the seven festivals from, from Jesus' ministry on this earth is showed in the seven festivals. Number, number one, he was the Passover lamb. Number two, he became the bread of life. Number three, he's first fruits. Let's all say first fruits. You know what first fruits are, right? Your best, correct? Okay, so God gave his best, right? So put right there, Jesus was the offering of God. He was the best, the first fruits. Okay, was he the fire? After he was resurrected, they said, wait for the promise, right, you guys? Okay, put right there that Jesus came Pentecost. We're going to be celebrating the seven festivals here. And then what is the day of shofars? The day of the blast, right? When Jesus comes. How many know that we become a living shofar, right? Okay, Jesus is going to come with a shout of the, of the shofar. And then the Day of Atonement, where, what happens in the Day of Atonement, everybody? You take the blood into the most holy place. Write that down. It's exactly what Jesus did. And then what's the tabernacles? Remember the, the, what happens in the tabernacles? You're supposed to live, you're supposed to build a, bo a booth outside of your house and don't put a roof on it and make it out of, uh, out of palm branches and you're supposed to sleep outside. This is, this is what they do in Israel, the, the ones that honor God. They go outside, they make a booth, and they lay down, and they look at the stars. You can't put, you could put, like, palm branches, but you got to be able to see the stars because God said, listen, you're going to sleep outside for seven days, and you're going to lay down, and you're going to look at the sky, and you're going to remember, this isn't your home, man. You live with me. <laughs> this isn't your, so you go outside for seven days, and you lay down, and when you're looking up in the sky, you remember, you're, this is not your home. So the seven festivals are all about Jesus Christ since he died, the plan of salvation, all the way to when we're going to go live with him forever and ever. So the festivals are not Jewish. It says 
They are the Lord's festivals. So why do we remember what Malachi, the book of Malachi said? Remember the Torah. Because people were going to forget the Torah. We've been attacked so much for honoring the Torah. Why? You know that we don't need pork, right? You know that, guys. Why? Because God tells us, God, God puts a guideline. Well, well, Peter did that. No, study the word before you say that. Okay? Study the word. Because listen, are, are you going to go to hell for having a chicharrones a la, a la carbon? No. Probably not. Okay, are you going to go, are you, are you going to get in trouble? Well, this is up to you. You're the temple of God, right? And what we do with our temple, and then not only that, I gave a whole teaching on pork 101. How many remember the swine flu? Where did it come from? Pigs. Where did the demons jump into? Who calls it an unclean animal? Not me. The word God. Everybody say the Torah. the Torah. Remember Malachi said, remember the Torah. Why did the Lord tell them that at the last? Because people were going to forget it, right? Okay, do I honor the Torah to get saved? No. Do I, I not eat pork to get saved? No, no. It has nothing to do with that. I honor the Torah because God said I'm a priest and a king. So if, if the Lord said that, I'm going to honor what he says. People don't honor it. Well, that's your choice. I am going to honor, not for a religious reason, but for an honoring reason. You understand that? For, I'm going to honor what God says. I, I'm going to honor it. So that's where it says, remember the Torah. The Torah, it tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, says, and the Lord says, you could eat everything with a hoof. He tells you exactly, even the doctors say the pigs don't sweat. And they carry so much toxic. Even the doctor, even the, the lobster and the crab, it's a cockroach of the ocean. Know that? Did you, and God said, don't eat that. Why? Did you know that there's toxins in there, right? Everybody knows that, right? Okay. Are you the temple of God? Yeah, well, God tells you to take care of the temple, and he tells us. So now, am I being religious? No. I'm going to remember the Torah, the book of Malachi. Remember the law. Remember the Torah. Okay? And who was standing at the mountain of transfiguration with the glory? Watch this. Moses, the Torah. Right? Elijah and Jesus, right? So we see. So this is so the, the festivals, the seven festivals of the Lord, they're to be honored. God tells you exactly what day to honor them. Amen? He tells you exactly what day, and he gives you the month, and, and you're going to look at that in the future. But I want you to know that, um, I want you to know that, that, the, that, the, the, that the, 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 it's coming up. It's in April, I believe. Did anybody give me the date? Somebody, April 15th? Passover, okay, April 15th at 6 p.m. we'll be having a dinner here. We'll be, we, will, we'll, we will be honoring, the, we will be honoring the, the festival. And then, of course, when you look at the Last Supper, remember, it's the Passover is what Jesus was honoring. He said, I'm the Passover lamb. That's what, that was a Passover picture. But we, people call it the Last Supper, but no, they were, he, was, he was saying, I'm the Passover lamb. That's what he, it was on the day of Passover that he did that. When he was going to go to the, uh, to he was going to go be slaughtered by the high priest. The high priest had to get the lamb. Study the word; it's really beautiful. But okay, so you write that down. That's not my teaching. So I just want to share that because uh, Passover is coming on, uh, coming up. But how many know that we are having Purim here? We're having uh, it's all in the Word of God, and it's uh, uh, and we're going to learn about. We're going to learn about. Um, we're going to learn about Esther. But you're going to learn about the enemy of Esther that you and I fight. His name is Amalekites, the Amalekites. Watch this. You have to understand that Mordecai, how many know who Mordecai is? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite you because it's, look, at, it's on a Wednesday night, just so you'll know. But I want you to invite somebody because we're going to have a dinner after. That's not part of the, the festival. We're going to go ahead and have dinner after because we're going to get everybody here. But I want you to read. Um, let's go turn your Bibles to, mm, let's do Esther chapter 2. And then don't forget, we've been learning about the last five kings. Remember, we learned about the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom. Okay, Esther chapter 2. We're going to be coming into the day of Purim. I'm going to start reading it, okay? Esther chapter 2. Chapter two. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus subsided, he remembered Basha. What, he, what she had done. If you know the story, we know that the wife disrespected the king, right? And they expelled her from being queen, okay? And the king, they set a decree to find him a wife. I call it the first beauty contest, okay? I got that from Vernon McGee. God, he was a good teacher. 
It's the first bio, it's the first beauty contest, okay? And remember, she was she was Jewish and she never revealed that till the end, okay? We know that. We know that Esther, that, that the Jewish people were a lower type of class people. They weren't wealthy. So you could only imagine that her skin was scorched from working the fields. Maybe a couple of hangnails, you know, who knows. And she was taken into the palace and prepared for six months. But God had a plan. But look at the, look at the way you read the Bible and why it's important you understand history. Okay? All right. So it says right here, verse 5. Are you reading verse 5? I'm not going to read the whole story. It says, and in Shushan, there was a certain what? Okay, what were they? Was Jesus? Jewish, okay. Whose name was who? Mordecai, the son of who? Gerar, the son of Shamil, the son of Kish. Okay, and he was a what? Circle the word Benjamite. Remember, these are the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's all say the 12 tribes. Come on. Okay, so is it important that you know history to be prophetic? Yes. Okay, watch this. He was a Benjamite. Does anybody know the prophecy of a Benjamite? Remember Jacob, the 12 sons of Jacob. Every single one of them got a prophecy. Are you supposed to live the prophecy of Jesus Christ? Yes, you are. You have a prophecy over your life, okay? And I don't know if you remember, but Pastor Mike told you, ask God who you are. Had anybody got an answer? Could I see? Anybody got an answer? Okay, who are you? You're Esther. Congrats. Okay, this message on the, is going to be yours. Anybody else? Somebody? Yeah, go on. Deborah. Deborah the prophetess. Whoa. You know, Deborah, Deborah was from the tribe of Ephraim. Hijo. He made me fruitful in my land of affliction. That's where Deborah's from. The tribe of Ephraim, which means she could say, the Lord made me, my Lord made me fruitful in my land of affliction. Huh? Ah, it's good you know history. Anybody else got a word where God said you are? You haven't asked him yet. I want to say, well, who am I? Go on, my sister. Esther también. All right. There's a lot. Of, anybody else? Anybody got a word? Come on, be bold. What about you? Esther. Esther. Wow. Oh, God's moving with the Esther anointing. Anybody else? Got you got Moses? <laughs> Brother got Moses. Wow. The chosen one. How about you? Gideon. Cut it out. Blow the shofar. Anybody else? Come on. You better seek the Lord. Yes, my sister. Who? Lydia. Purple. The color purple, Lydia. Wow. Wow, that's real special there. Oh, anybody else got a word yet that if the Lord told them? Yes, my sister. Ruth the Moabitess. Does anybody know about her history? Wow. You know that she was, I want to I'll be here telling everybody stories. <laughs> Fear for a lot. Anyway, okay, go ahead, Edna. Deborah underneath the palm tree in Bethel, right? By Rama. The word Rama means ram's horn. You're going to start blowing the ram's horn. Anybody else? Who? You're Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. But you know what Jeremiah means? The Lord sets free. It sets him free. Even though he had such a hard assignment. What about you, Eddie? King David, whoa, lead battles. Okay, can you guys have your name by next week? Can you tell the Lord to tell you? Yes, Sylvia, Paul, the tent maker. Ah, Paul the apostle, yes, the sent one. Praise his name. Okay, so now, how, how do I, how do I, you just ask the Lord, Lord, who am I at this season? And did you know that he'll speak to you? Even if you just hear it or you look in the Bible, trust God that he speaks. Look in the Bible and if it stands out, you know, a little, you know, then that's who it is. <laughs> you don't have to hear, it's Joshua. You don't have to hear like that. <laughs> you don't have to hear God like that. It's just a little, you know, just a little unction, function, something, you know. Praise the Lord. Okay, so now go ahead. Let's get, oh, oh my God, I got all in. All, okay, so look at, then there was a certain Jew by the name of who? Everybody say Mordecai. Okay, he was a relative actually of King Saul, okay? Because uh, Saul was a Benjamite. You know Saul was a Benjamite? That's who he was. And the tribe of Benjamites, there were, their prophecy that they were warriors. Let's all say warriors. 
The Benjamites were warriors. They were called wolves. And they were, they were, you know, a wolf tears it up like this. That's the tribe of Benjamin. They were called, wow. But Mordecai, see, he was a warrior. So think about this. Watch this. It says they, they were carried away. It says, had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives who had been captured with who? What king was that? Who? Jehoiahu? No, it says right here, verse 6. Ish had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives who had been captured with who? Jehoiashim. Now look in the bottom. What king was he, you guys? Look in the bottom of your paper. Oh, you don't have it. I didn't make this for you. On your kings, on your kings. Uh, I gave it to you last week. I gave you a handout last week. Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin. Okay, so we know that he was carried away with the fourth before the fifth king. Right here, look it. So we see here that Babylon had taken him captives. So he's, he's, he's actually your, your, the, the fourth king before the end came. Now watch this. So how did Esther get over there? God, they're telling you how. <laughs> the Bible's telling you how. In the reign of Jeho Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin. So you see how you're reading the Bible and it talks about the king. And if you don't know who the king is, you don't know what's happening. How are you going to get the revelation? Okay? How are you going to get it? That's why you need to know history. History to get prophetic. Now watch this. So, so pay attention. So you know that the Bible tells us in the book of Esther that this is what happened in the days when they were taken by, from, from Jerusalem. They were taken captive. They were taken out of Jerusalem, the family. And it says there, in the days of King Jehoiachin, which is the Babylonian Empire. That's how they ended up over there in Persia. Now watch this. So... Now, now we see here what Esther, it says right here, uh, it says, and they took, and Mordecai had brought up who? Hadassah. That's Esther, right? Now, if you study the name of Esther, her, her name is, comes from the myrtle tree. Let's all say the myrtle tree. Man, we're going to have to have another school to learn about the trees here, okay? All right, so it says, I'm not going into that because I'll be here all day. Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. So we don't know if her mother and father were killed by the Babylonians because a lot of people were killed by them. Okay, and it says, the young woman was lovely and beautiful when her father and mother died, so Mordecai took her as his own daughter. So Exodus 17, really quick, Exodus 17, I'm going to read it to you. It says, Exodus 17, verse 8, Amalek, Amalek fought with Israel, and Joshua defeated Amalek. Exodus 17 17, the Lord says, and you shall have, you shall have war with Amalek. Watch this, from generation to generation. Are you a generation? Yes. Will you have war with Amalek? Yes. Scripture tells you that. What is Amalek? Do you know what Amalek is? Because if you know the Hebrew letters and you study the name Amalek and you know your letters, you're going to see that same word spells doubt and unbelief. When you're doubting, you're fighting a spirit of Amalek. So you don't want to be like Paul the Apostle, be one that's hitting the air. You don't hit nothing. You're exhausted. You don't know what spirit you're fighting. So we know that the same letters. Now you're going to learn this in, you're going to learn this in Borim when you come. I'm going to teach it. Well, not me. Me and Pastor Mike will be teaching on Queen Esther and the spirit of Amalek. Now, now really quick. Now you'll understand why Mordecai did not bow down when Haman the Amalekite rode his horse, and everybody bowed down to him. Okay, why did he not bow? Because if he, had, he would have bowed, maybe they would, everything would have, wouldn't have went chaotic. But Mordecai was a Benjamite. Oh, man, he was a warrior. He's going to bow down to And then not only that, on top of it, here comes Amalek. And he knows the Torah. He knows the word where the Lord said, you will have war from generation to generation with Amalek. You shall utterly destroy him. So he's coming and everybody has to bow. And Mordecai's looked up and I'm bowing to that because he's a, he's comes from the tribe of Benjamin, everybody. He's got the warrior in her, a warrior in him. And listen, God is a God of war. You need to know how to fight and you need to know who you're fighting. You got to know what demons are attacking you. You got to come against these spirits. You have to learn how to fight the good fight of faith. 
You guys are fighting in your, where are you fighting at, everybody? You're fighting in your soul. That's, war, that's the war ground. The war grounds your soul. Is doubt and unbelief a thought? Yes. Comes through the mind to control your emotions, to cause you to doubt, to fear, to get discouraged, to get overwhelmed. And then you need a brusky after that. Everybody say the soul. Come on. Or you need to go out and have some type of affair because you have unmet needs. You know, your eyes got to wander. And then you do the double take when you see a girl, you know, two times. I mean, one time was good enough. Then, you know, I call it the double take. The lust kicks in. The spirits kick in. They start kicking in the soul to control your eyes, to focus on things. So please understand that you are at war. And you got to let the warrior come out of you that Jesus Christ, every one of you have, has a spirit of the living God in you. And you got to draw from your spirit, man. Okay? So when you come on Sunday, no, not Sunday, not next Wednesday, the following Wednesday, we're going to learn that that's why you need to sign up because I need to buy food and I don't know how much food to buy. We only have how many signups? Did they grow at least? 47? 20, I know there's more than 27 people in here. And you guys got to sign up because I got to get food. I got to set up the tables. I got to do everything. I, I need you guys to sign up. So, uh, so when we leave, go ahead and sign up. Unless you want me to sign you all up. If everybody's coming, you're gonna, you come to Wednesday anyways. I mean, you're, you're here Wednesdays. But if you're going to invite somebody to dinner, and I'm going to have the, we're having a full service. I'm having a band, worship, everything, because it's a special day. But we're going to learn about the warrior, and you're the tribe of Benjamin. So we're going to talk about, I, I, listen, listen, this is how prophetic it is. I even bought, I even had a noose with a, what do you call it when you hang somebody? Now, what do you call those things when you hang somebody? A wrenching. A lynch. a, I even made my own lynch here to show you how the enemy wants to hang you. You know what see? What the enemy builds against you, the Lord is going to put the enemy to hang there. It's so prophetic. So I, I need you to get, I need you to, to be stirred up in what God says, okay? I need you to be stirred up because... That's what's going to set you free. So now, not now, but in the upcoming weeks, and I'm praying that I could get it done, but I don't know if we can because it's just too much to teach. But I've got the, I got the prophecies of the 12 sons, so I'm going to get them to you, but you guys have so much to study right now, I'm not going to give it to you yet. Not going to do it. <laughs> not yet. I'm going to wait because I, I want you to focus on the Hebrew alphabet. So um, remember... What's the, what's the day today, everybody? The second, right? The second? Mar okay, so why don't you do this? For the next 22 days, study the, the first Hebrew alphabet was yesterday, right? That's the aleph, right? The second one is what? The bet. Okay, and then tomorrow's what? The third? And what's the third? What's the third Hebrew alphabet? The gimel, right? And then the fourth of March, you're going to look at what? The dalit, right? Then the fifth, you're going to look at the what? Hey. Okay, so... Try to, I used to do that every month. That's how I started learning. I said, oh, today's the fifth day. It is the, ah, the hair. So try to stir yourself up in the daily. 22 days. You got 22 days. <laughs> you got it, guys? Motivate yourself. Hijo. Okay, so now let me go over my handout really quick. I send it to you through the email, correct? Or through um, text, right? The text. Okay, so the text. Okay, first of all, somebody have it? Yeah. Okay, let me have one. Did I, did I hand them out? This is that. No, this is the one, remember? No, I, 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 you guys can print them or they're on your phone, right? I set them on your phone, so you can look on your phone right now if you want. Because every time I make this on Monday, I make it on my computer so that I could put you in remembrance of what you learned, Okay. That's why I'm doing this. It takes time for me to do this, but I want you to retain what God is giving you. That's why when you have a chance, print all of them for yourself, and you'll have one weekly. I, sh I think I've done them practically every week. If you don't have them, I could send you all seven of them or eight or wherever we're at. So these are the handouts I sent you, and it, it, it reviews what I taught the week before. And I thought this was good that I do this every week so that you could retain what you're learning. Because I know sometimes it's hard to remember things, so you have it in writing. Even with pictures, 
that I make it with you, for you. So last week, we looked at Jeremiah where it says, what did the Lord tell Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1.7? The Lord told Jeremiah, what did it say? You must go everywhere I what? I'm going to say it again. You must go everywhere I send you. That's what, that's what we looked at last week. The prophets. See, people want to be prophets and they don't even want to go to church. They don't, they don't even want to get up, in the, get up and get here at 9 o'clock when we start prayer now. The Lord said, everywhere he sends you, you have to go. That's a prophet for you, okay? Just so you'll know, I'm not trying to knock you down. I'm educating you, amen? I'm educating you. My job is to educate you in the word of God, not to condemn you or criticize you, but to educate you on what thus saith the Lord. So, okay, so people are here because we invited people to learn. We invited people to come and study, to learn history, and also that if people wanted to be ordained, okay, we are opening up our team so people can join our team here and then, you know, pray for people and minister. But, of course, you already know that your life has to line up with, you know, the Lord's, you know, the holiness. And, and, uh, and just, I'm just telling you, you've got you to line up with the word. you got to line up with the word. And it, it takes work, some of us that are new in the faith, and, but you could get it. So, so we're, we're opening up our team to, to, to uh, join the team and to, and to uh, get, get your hands to start pushing the plow, okay? Breaking the ground, pushing the plow, and planting the seed. So we know that, um, that we opened up the, the, the ministry, so we're going to call it Biblical Studies a, a Certificate. But we're going to have our graduation in June, and then we're going to continue the school because there's so much more to learn, maybe with the prophets. I'm supposed to teach on all the, I'm supposed to teach on the letters to the churches in Revelation, but that takes a long time. The, the, you know, the seven churches, the Lord wrote uh, letters to each one to learn because they're all prophetic and they mean something to us. It's not, it's, we're the church, you know. We're the church. Okay, so then we learned about that. So what happened to the northern kingdom, everybody? What happened to the northern kingdom? They were wiped out, right? Remember the ten, remember, remember there's how many sons? Let's do this, let's do this refreshing. Remember the, the, the lineage was, let's all say King David. And then who? Solomon. And then who? Rehoboam. And then what happened? There was a what? Split. How many, how many tribes went to the northern kingdom? And then who became their God? The sins of who? Jeroboam. Good. Okay. Let's all say the northern kingdom. On your paper, on your book, who were the prophets to the northern kingdom? It's in your book. Jeremiah, I mean, excuse me, uh, Elisha, Elisha. They're, they're right there in your book. Okay, Mika. Yeah, so you got it. I think I put it on here. I gave you this last week. Look it. They're here. These are the prophets. These are the, these are the northern kingdom. These are the southern kingdoms. And these are the prophets here. Yeah. Yeah, so them are the prophets. Okay. Now watch this. So then the Assyrians came in and what? Wiped them out. Who was trying to warn them? God's prophets. There was some false prophets here also. Remember they were the, they were... Who appointed, there was, what was that word? Self, thank you, self-appointed. Self-appointed priests, self-appointed prophets. And let's all have a party and serve God and get high and have orgies. That was their worship, and they knew God. They weren't foreign Canaanite nations. They were raised in the word. So the Assyrians came and what? Wiped them out. That's why I put a red X. There ain't no more northern kingdom. They're all gone. They're all taken in captivity. They all lost their land, their livelihood, everything. Now they're slaves. So you have now, you have what? Everybody say the southern kingdom. Come on. And these were the sons of who that ruled the, uh, the southern kingdom? Who's, who was David? And the priest? Aaron, right? And then God appointed prophets. Okay, when Hezekiah was a king, was he a righteous king, everybody? Yes. Who was a prophet to, uh, uh, to uh, I will say the name. Who was a prophet to Hezekiah? Yes. Isaiah, yes. Who said Isaiah? Yes. Yes. And who else? Starts with a J. Jeremiah. He was the last prophet that was trying to, that was trying to get them before Babylon came, but they threw his butt in where? Prison. 
Do they throw us in prison when we try to correct them and instruct them? Yes. They, ch they block my phone number. Hijo. They block my butt. They don't want to hear the truth. And then they get mad at me. And then they cut me loose and they feed me with a bread of affliction. <laughs> they call me a cult and a witch <laughs> when they're in witchcraft themselves. Why are they calling me that? Because it's them. Because it's them. I can't tell them. I, I, the Bible says not to eat that. I'm going to eat it anyways. You're religious. I'm like, no, I honor the Torah. Not to get saved. It's because I am saved and I'm a priest. I'm a priest unto God. That's, I, listen, it's not to say I'm big and bad. It's just that I honor what he says because I want to be in my God zone and my safe zone. You understand? I want to be obedient. I want to be obedient. I'm not trying to make brownie points. I'm just being obedient to the structure and the order of God. God has an order, everybody. Why do you think he put the outer court, inner court, and the most holy place? There's an order. And every piece of furniture means something. And it's inside of you prophetically. Okay, prophetically. That's why I will not, I will not go get my nails done when they have Buddhas there and they got incense flying. Like, <laughs> now you can go get them there. But that's fine with you. But when I, I got the Holy Ghost, I'm like, Jesus, what is this? And I'm feeling that they're hungry. Do you know anything? Pastor Mike ordered these. Listen, Pastor Mike ordered these beautiful brochures that he hasn't gave yet with every false cult and religion from the beginning, how it started, and what they are. You need to know. I studied. I studied. You know why? Because I want to know what are they believing? How are they so deceived? So I started. I studied the. I studied Jehovah Witnesses, the JWs. I I studied. I studied. I studied. The Muslims, I studied, I, I, I'm not kidding you. We had a Muslim come in, and, and I said, are you a, 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 are you a, a Sunni or a Shia? He goes, how do you know that? I said, because I studied. I said, you believe Jesus was a prophet, right? He goes, yeah, we do. Not God. Not God. So I was able to communicate with him in a very respectful, kind, loving way. Now take that shirt off. That's the devil himself. That's not the way I talk to people. Take that shirt right there. That's the devil right there. They're like, where? They don't know. And you just chopped your head off with their tongue. <laughs> you got to know how to talk to people. And I'm not saying because you guys already know the word. So we could talk to you. Hey, the Lord said this. Lord. But somebody that's new to the faith, you got to use wisdom, right? Yeah. So use wisdom. Amen. Not to say we don't tell them. That's not in the word, and God would like you to make better choices, you know, for your benefit and for blessings in your life. But, um, okay, so, um, so the last Wednesday, we've seen also Jehoiakim. What did he do with the word of God? Yes, who said that? Burn it. Burn it. And you say, well, how dare he? But how many times have you torn up what God told you to do and you throw it in the fire but remember the Lord tells us exactly how he was sitting he was by the fire like Toko and Chudo and Babylon's all surrounding him that's the way we are a lot of people in the church like nothing I ain't gonna go to church I mean, God's okay with all my decisions there's your golden calf mentality he knows my heart my heart my heart so Say the Bible says your heart is wicked in every way. But we do the same thing too. We do the same thing too. And Babylon's right there knocking at the door. And what is Babylon in the book of Revelations, everybody? Let's all say a habitation of devils, hateful birds, and unclean spirits. She's talking about demons, not the nation. Get prophetic. Because in Revelations, it calls him demons. In the, in the book of Kings, it calls him the king of Babylon. But we already know who he served, right? Okay, so now ask yourself, are you, Jeho are you Jehoiakim? So what happened with Jehoiakim? I put your donkey right there. You see your donkey? The Torah says what? Do not yoke what? An ox with a what? 
That's the Torah, man. That's Deuteronomy, the Torah. That's a commandment. And you might look in the New Testament and it says, don't be unequally yoked, right? But God says, don't yoke yourself to a donkey. That's when, that's why the second time the Lord said, oh, he threw, he burned up my, he burned it up. He tore it up and burned it up. He didn't even let me finish reading. Okay, write it again. But this time, add this to it. See? And the adding was, you're going to die and you're not even going to have a burial. And when they threw him over, he was with the donkeys. Which, what, that's prophetic. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's serious. It's serious. It's a message to you and I that God is serious about this. Amen. Why? Because he's trying to save your life. Do you understand? He's trying to save your life from demonic open doors. Okay? That's why you got, that's why the Lord said, be ye holy. Right? Does he say that? What does holy mean? Separated to God. I'm separated to God. I'm separated. I'm, I separate myself from the things of the world. I don't play with the world because I'm going to get bit. Okay? The enemy bites and his bites are hard. You might start a honeymoon stage with Satan. Let's talk prophetic now. Let's talk about the batter's program. The one we teach here. Okay? The honeymoon stage. How many know your cycle if you ever go to domestic violence here? It's the honeymoon stage and then what? Students, tension, who said, go on, what did you say? Explosion, blow up. So the honeymoon stage is Satan takes a few steps back, go on, have some fun. All right, the honeymoon stage with your emotions and everything you want. But then he comes in for the kill. And you don't even know, like Jonah, you're in a storm and don't even know it. Do you understand that? That's real serious. That Jonah's asleep in the storm. This is how spiritually dense he became. He said, they said, well, remember when they asked Jonah, who do you work for? Uh, God, who cares who you work for when the ship's going down? Who in the heck cares who you work? The ship is going down. Okay, where are you going? Mm. What's your nationality? Who cares if you're Mexican, American, the ship's going down. And you know what he says? They said, well, you, then he says, well, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew. I'm chosen. I, I was on, I'm on a mission for God. And they said, well, what should we do so the storm will stop? This is what he says. Throw me overboard. I would have said, everybody, let's get on our knees and let's repent. Turn the ship around and take me to Nineveh. But so dense, throw me overboard. Almost like, watch this, almost like Jehoshaphat. You guys were here from the southern kingdom, and he goes to the northern kingdom because that's his primo, and he's going to have God in Asada with him. And then pretty soon he's in a war. Pretty soon Ahab tells him, well, take a, uh, I'm going to take off my kingly robe and you wear yours. His spirit sense. you see, when you're, when you're in your soul and when you're in your golden calf mentality, you're in your honeymoon stage with Satan. And so he's leading the war, and everybody's chasing Jehoshaphat. Why? Because he has the kingly robe. And there is Ahab is over there acting like he's a soldier. He didn't even know our spiritual senses when we're in iniquity, when we're in compromise, when we're in the soul, we can't be led by the Spirit of God. And it's a danger zone because the enemy wants to, uh, wants to control your life. He wants to manipulate your thoughts, to control your emotions, to influence you. So you, the Bible says, and you are held captive by the will of the enemy. And there's a perfect will, permissive will. This is scripture. Perfect, permissive, and the will that's held captive by the will of the enemy. And that operates in the soul. That's where, where people say, what's divination? Well, divination has a little bit of, of the word of God, but it's filled with evil spirits. That's why we shared with you in the book of Ezekiel, they prophesied out of their own heart. That's why the heart has to be clean. That's why the soul has to be clean because you prophesy, thus saith the Lord, and you don't throw some of yourself in there, right? Because everything's cleansed. You have nobody living inside of you. You have no grudges. You have no record of wrongdoings. Everything has been circumcised, and you make sure. That's why Pastor Mike told everybody, start taking communion every day. It takes a few minutes. Take communion. Take it in the morning, the night, whatever. He likes morning. I like night because I, I, 
I, I, I, I like to sleep real good. And I, I mean, Pastor Mike takes it in the morning. I take it and I choose. Take communion every day. Even if you felt like you, you messed up during the day, take communion. Father, forgive me. I receive your body. Lord, forgive me. And then drink, Father, the blood of Jesus. I receive your blood. Washed every part of my body, my eyes, my ears, everything I seen and heard. Everything that came in me from the enemy. Just take, take it off. That's, that's communion every day. This, you, it's something you do every day. We've been taking it for years that you got to take communion every day. It doesn't say take it once a month on the first. It doesn't say that. It says it's as often as you'd like. So listen, are, it, it, the glories. And the, the new, I got my new wine skin on from Sunday. I wore my wine skin here. Got the grapes going on. Because God said Shiloh's in a new wine skin. And my people must put on a new wine skin and take off the grave clothes. Take off the I can'ties. And take down all that, that, that I can't and I don't want to. It's too hard. Just take off all that stuff off you now. And say, I'm willing, God, a new wine skin. Because I talked about the, the wine, how it explodes and it stirs up and it produces gas like a bomb. And poof, that's why the Bible says, enlarge your tent. We compare scripture with scripture as God's word complements each other. If that's why I could bring scriptures. If you ever look at my teaching, I put a lot of word up there. I don't just preach one scripture because I like to lay a foundation and then come in with a bang and the blast and then the cherry and the whipped cream and you got it. It's important you hear scripture because the Bible said he sent his word to deliver us from our destruction. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Praise the Lord. All right. So you got your review. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Mike, uh, Jeho King Jehoiakim. And then, of course, um, the word of God said, Jeremiah, uh, he had been burned oil. Okay. We read that. Jeremiah 22, the prophecy. And how many know the four faces of the glory? Do we all know it? It's right here. Okay. The, the, the vision of John, the beloved, and the vision of Ezekiel, the glory, and it's prophetic. The face of a what? The face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, and what else? The lion. The fa there are four faces from the world of what? Right? they are titles. And, of course, the face of G the man is Jesus Christ. Okay, this is the time for the face of Jesus Christ. This is the time where the face of Jesus Christ. We become the face of Jesus Christ. Okay? And your eyes will become the eyes of fire. When you start taking the communion, you're partaking of the body of Christ. He said his eyes were like in the eyes of fire, right? So get prophetic, amen? All right, God bless you. Pastor Mike, where are you? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Did he take off? Yes.